right. Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Porter, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the commission's weekly webinar series where we cover a variety of topics and activities that may be of interest to libraries. Um, the show is broadcast live on Wednesday mornings at 10 a.m. Central Time, but if you're unable to join us on Wednesdays, that's fine. We do record the show, and it is posted to our website afterwards, um, and I will show you at the end of today's show where you can um, access all those archived recordings. Both the live show and the archives are free and open to anyone to watch, so please do share with your friends, family, neighbors, colleagues, uh, anyone you think may be interested in any of the shows that we have on. Um, we do do a mixture of things here on Encompass Live, book reviews, interviews, mini training sessions, demos of services and products, um, basically anything that we think libraries may be interested in. We are the Nebraska Library Commission and we are the state agency for all libraries in the state. So we have um, things for all libraries. Not We're not a public library commission. Um, so public, academic, K-12, uh, museums, correctional facilities, historical sites. We've had anything and everything on the show over its history. Uh, so there should be something for everyone somewhere either in our upcoming shows or in our archives. <clears throat> we do have um, some sessions that we have Nebraska Library Commission staff present on. Um, things and services and programs that we're doing here through the commission. Um, but we also do bring on guest speakers, and that is what we have this morning, as you can see on the screen. Um, Katie Murtha is from Lincoln City Libraries. Now, are you specifically based at, at a Bennett particular? Mar yeah, Bennett Martin. Martin Public Library. I'm a one librarian there. I mainly do adult services. Mm -hmm. So that's one right down in downtown Lincoln. Mm -hmm. And she is the also doing that the coordinator organizer yeah, pro it? program coordinator for the coordinator one, for the one book on Lincoln, mm -hmm. um, and we're going to talk about that this morning. Um, before we do jump into that, I just want to um, make one comment. Um, as anyone who is maybe a regular to our show will notice, we do not have a camera showing this morning, and uh, this is just for everyone who attending and anyone who watches the archive. We are having technical difficulties with our webcam since we had an update to our computers done over the weekend. It's not recognizing it. So sorry, no camera view to today's show, um, but hopefully next week we will be back and get it all fixed and ready for that. Um, so I will just hand it over to you, Katie, to okay. take it away and tell us all about what's going on this year with One Book, One Lincoln. <clears throat> you should, all right, hang on a sec, let me do, there you go, now you should be able to. There, there we, we go. Okay. So this is our 17th year of wow. having a One Book, One Lincoln pr uh, program. Um, and what we're doing is encouraging um, all adults in Lincoln and Lancaster County to uh -huh. read the same book and uh, talk or read it and, and think about the themes and have discussions. So we want to uh, want people reading. We want them engaging uh, with each other and we want them communicating. And so what we strive to do is create um, discussion experiences that people can participate not only through reading, but through our programming as well. So in 1998, Seattle had a very successful program called "What um, If All Seattle Read the Same Book," and one the longer title originally. <laughs> I'm uh, glad that it's been a little uh, <laughs> short, sure, condensed. Yeah. 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 Um, so that's kind of where the, the the origins of these community wide reading programs really began, and. Um, in Lincoln, ours started in 2002, and so we had a lot of co-sponsors at the time. Um, one of our largest co-sponsors was the Lincoln Journal Star, our local newspaper. Um, over over the years, it's kind of our sponsors have kind of drifted away, um, and it's really just put on now by the the library. Um, but it's kind of got the same features where we're um, nominating. We have a nominating process for titles, um, selecting them. The community gets to read and vote, and then we're offering programs and discussion opportunities. So for us, it's a really a year-long program. Uh, we start with uh, cutting off nominations in January for that current year. Um, our steering committee usually meets sometime late December, beginning of January. Our selection committee meets in February and March. The programming committee starts meeting in April. Our finalists are announced to the public on Memorial Day. Mm -hmm. And then we have uh, community reading and voting mm -hmm. 
through the end of July. We announce a winner on Labor Day, and then we offer special programs in the fall, usually September, October timeframe. Um, and we also have book dis uh, club discussions uh, where staff will come out to uh, local book clubs, and, and that goes on throughout the year. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting that this is a program that so the, the program for 2018, it's not in January, you know what book you're reading. There's there's like lead up to it of having multiple books for the community to really okay. kind of read to figure mm -hmm. out which one they might want to be discussing or. Mm -hmm. Well, well, and we'll kind of talk about each each of these different committees and how they all mm -hmm. work and how, how the program works. But just, you know, an overall view mm -hmm. here is this is, you know, we have something going uh, almost throughout the entire year yeah. regarding this program. So in terms of nominations, um, we encourage people to nominate as soon as they read a good book, as soon as they've read something that they really enjoyed and want to recommend to another person. Um, so we have nominations you can do on our website year, year round. Um, and then in the beginning of January, we do a final push for that year, um, and we have paper ballots in all the libraries, and just really recommend to people, you know, if you've read something, um, please nominate it uh, because it can't be considered if it's not nominated. Mm -hmm. And at the end of January, we cut off the nominations for the current year's program. Uh, it was kind of interesting this year, we had a book that was nominated and when I um, went to pull it for our selection committee, we hadn't even received it in the library. <laughs> so, oh, it was that, um, it was that new. new book? So oh. I just I just <laughs> moved it to, to next year's. I put it in the next year's category. We'll look at it next year. But if you um, can't get the book, you can't actually <laughs> Add it, have it be added to the list. But okay. somebody yeah. had read it and, and really liked it. So, wow. um, <laughs> so yeah. And and it's all kinds of you know we have um, older books, classics. I mean we, there's not um, you know there's nothing that's that's like, is there any requirements off. for um, what the book needs we, to be. We do have some format requirements, okay. and yeah. we'll kind of talk a little yeah. bit about that in, in a minute. Um, but once once the nominations are um, cut off. Um, then then it goes to the next uh, process. So sometime in late December, or early January, we have our steering committee uh, meet. And so our steering committee is made up of our library director, um, our head of technical services, the usually the chairman of the selection committee is there. Um, my boss, who's a library coordinator and is, um, is in charge of two different library branches, she's, she's there. Um, I'm there. Sometimes we have um, other other members that have been on the um, the selection committee for a while, but um, what we really do is we look at what was successful last year, what do we want to change. So this program format has pretty much stayed the same the entire um, 17 years, but we have changed things here and there. Um, several years ago, um, they, it started out with like five possible titles. I remember there used to be more. And yeah, to pull um, from yeah. You know, as as kind of our funding kind of dried up a little bit, we kind of shrunk it down. Um, so now it's only the top three is what uh, people get to vote on. For a while there, we were only um, the selection committee was actually selecting a winner, right. and public the public wasn't voting on it. Um, they kind of did that because it it's really hard to get programming done in a timely manner, like to get the program set up related to the titles. Um, I mm -hmm. took over the program in 2016, and that was one of the things mm -hmm. I heard the most from the community is that yeah. they really were upset about not being able to vote. <laughs> so that was something I brought to the steering committee and said, I think we really need to reestablish voting. Mm -hmm. And so last year it was it was reestablished okay. and it was so it was previous so it kind of has sometimes it has been and sometimes then it wasn't I, I think it went through about a three board. three or four year period where the selection committee was actually selecting the winner mm -hmm. um, and last year our selection committee's top choice was not the top choice of the, the community, the community. Ah. so I'm, I'm yeah, really glad that we're back yeah. to to voting again because it really does uh, I think it gives people a, an incentive to read all three books mm -hmm. um, and it gives people, you know, a choice. Um, mm -hmm. When we're, we'll talk a little bit about the selection committee, but I've often told people you could, um, it's roughly about 18 to 20 people, you could come up with 18 or 20 people, different people, and get maybe three different choices. Yeah. So, um, so that's something that our steering committee looks at. We look at recommended changes. Um, one of the things I, I did last year, um, we had book talks in the fall, because our book talk season runs uh, from September to May. And so mm -hmm. they were doing book talks in the fall uh, because they didn't want the titles, anything related to the titles released to the public before the announcement yeah. at the end of May. And I thought, well, that's kind of silly because 
book talks are all about promoting books. <laughs> and so we did a sneak peek at the top 10. Um, I didn't tell which ones were going to be the top three, but that was really popular. We had two uh, book talk groups, one at Gear Branch Library and one at Bethany Branch Library. And I did a sneak peek for those, and we had um, really good turnouts, and people were very interested, and they, they had a chance to take home a book. They didn't know if it was going to be one of the top three, but they had a chance to take home mm. a book before it was announced to the public. Um, and then the, the final thing our steering committee does is we finalize our selection committee members. So um, we have people rotate on and off the selection committee. There's different openings every year. And so we, um, we need to get, usually we shoot for about 18 people. But I'll mm -hmm. talk a little bit more about the selection committee um, and their job. So in terms of what what actually makes the cut, we, we get this large number of nominations. If an item doesn't matter how many times an item is nominated. Um, so it could be nominated you know, 12 times. It could be nominated once. We'll still give it the same look. Um, but when we take that initial list, we send it to our technical services department, and they go through and they look and see, can we get these books? Mm -hmm. And you know they're looking for things that are out of print or things that are difficult to purchase. Um, but we do require certain formats. So we absolutely have to have just regular print and large print. Sure. And we need to have an audiobook version of it. Uh, usually we purchase uh, for our adult collection audiobooks on compact discs. Mm -hmm. um, as uh, more recently, um, we're, we're looking for downloadable ebooks and e audiobooks. And we have two vendors, Overdrive and Hoopla. Mm -hmm. So if we can find it through either one of those, um, it's not, I would say, it's not as. Uh, essential that we get the downloadable versions, but more and more people um, read that way or listen yeah. that way. So it's it's not necessarily required yet, but it's something that is looked at. And if we can't get it that way, it, it might become a, a reason that it gets bumped off the list mm -hmm. that actually goes to the selection committee. Because we'll probably, just based on formats alone, we'll probably knock off about 50 to 60 books wow. off of the nomination list. How many how many titles do you usually get um, nominated? To somewhere, start with? well, yeah. it really depends. You know, we found if we do once we opened up to year-round nominations, we got a lot oh, more. Right. Um, so this this year we actually had quite a few, so mm. it was close to somewhere close to two hundred, I think, wow. was the initial yeah, list. Start with, right, that's what you um, got to start with, yeah. and then uh, and that got pared down. So what the selection committee actually got was about 150, a little over 150 books to look at. So you could actually even get, yeah. Mm -hmm. And so um, as far as our committee members, um, like I said, the, the ideal amount is about 18 people. If you get less, you tend to have really strong voices that kind of dominate. If you get more people, then it gets to be too cumbersome with too many people yeah. and too many opinions. <laughs> um, but uh, we usually ask people to be on the committee for about three years. Um, you can certainly get off of it if you want to get off of it. But most people who get on it, it's really a fun committee to be on. Um, and most people are really sad when they're three years old <laughs> and they have to. And they ask, how late, long do I have to wait before I can get on it yeah. again? Um, so just in terms of what they have to do, um, we're, we're reading basically is, is, it, and just kind of giving judgments, um, giving your opinions, uh, should this book be moved forward? Should, should we kind of eliminate it? Um, and then I also kind of asked some of the members to come to our book discussions because I think it's important that the members actually meet our, our community and have an idea mm -hmm. of, um, who, you know, who were, who we're choosing books for. So in terms of getting involved, um, I usually ask, you know, it's anybody who lives in Lincoln or Lancaster County. Um, we do try to get um, a lot of minority voices, which is a little bit of a challenge for us in Lincoln. Mm -hmm. um, and we're also trying to get an age range. So mm -hmm. you know, when, we're, when we're kind of selecting the final committee members, we're looking at, you know, do we have some younger people? Do we, you know, have some men? Do we have people that are from um, minority groups that can, you know, voice kind of their opinions too. So it's kind of, we're just kind of looking to see in general. I, this past year, I had a lot more people who wanted to be on the committee than I had open positions. <laughs> um, sometimes it goes the other way. Sometimes yeah. you're kind of desperate for people, you know, please, yeah. please, you know, recruiting people to be on it. Um, but I, I go out to a lot of book discussions. Um, I, I meet with community groups and do presentations. So every time I talk about One Book, One Link, and I always ask if there's anybody who wants to get involved, please email me or you can mm -hmm. um, email a library staff 
staff. We had a, a guy on the committee this year who I think had kind of I would, I would pestered, I don't know if that's the right word, <laughs> but he was definitely very vocal and in, in, mm -hmm. in, in wanting to be on the committee, and he was a great addition. We were really happy to have him. He had a lot of really interesting ideas. So now you said you got about 150 titles to look through to start with, mm -hmm. and the committee members read the books to see. You don't have to read 150 books, do you? No, <laughs> no. I'll talk a little bit more okay. about about that, that can process. Be a little daunting, I would um, say, but everybody can't always read well, every and, single. Well, and you know that's uh, w one of the things that we've found with the selection committee members is most of them are like e either English majors or English mm -hmm. teachers. They've had a lot of professors or people from. Um, we have several universities in Lincoln. Um, so those are all people who absolutely love to read right. and they have um, a really kind of a, a criteria of what they really want. Mm. And one of the things that we always kind of have to remember um, is that we're not picking for like an academic level True. where we, you know, we have people that, um, you know, have ninth grade reading levels mm. and we have to try to find <clears throat> something that will engage somebody with mm -hmm. that reading level as well. I, did, I also noticed too that some of these books are ones that potentially you've already read too. Like I know mm -hmm. some of the titles that have been on here, I mm -hmm. before it was even on One Book, One Link, and I'd already read it anyways. I was right. like, oh, cool, I already know about that one. I don't need to. <laughs> well, it was it was kind of interesting. A couple of years ago, we had a discussion. There was um, a book that I think was published in like the 80s, and I'm blanking on the title right now, but um, it was kind of a takeoff on kind of King Lear set in at an Iowa farm. Mm -hmm. um, and it was very popular at the time, and so there were a lot of people on the committee who had read it when it was brand new, uh -huh. and it, you know a generation had gone by, and there were a lot of people who didn't had, had never, never read it, it didn't yeah. really know about it because it was you know a popular book at the time, but mm -hmm. maybe not necessarily a, a, a classic, and so we had this really interesting discussion: <laughs> do we you know do we put it out there because people who read it you know 30 years ago their lives had have changed. It'd be interesting you know? to see what and you think of so it now. So you go back and, and reread it and, mm -hmm. and, oh, yeah. and, um, and, you know, and see, so it, it didn't actually make it to the, I don't think it made it to the top <laughs> 10. I think it was like the 11th or 12th. It, you know, it almost got there, but, um, there's Good, no, too much competition. <laughs> there's no necessarily cut off in terms of, you know, um, publication date mm -hmm. and uh, you know we have a lot of people in fact last year we had a lot of I would say classic dystopian classic that started making it back mm -hmm. on the Brave New World, Hands mm -hmm. yeah, May Tail, yeah. um, oh, yeah. you know just um, and we kind of had a really interesting discussion about you know, do we want to go back and and look at some of you know these books um, and I think a lot of people on the committee at that time felt that you know They'd already been kind of looked at really mm. hard in, in, in high school, and would we have a lot of interest? Do we yeah. want to, you know, it's a, it's a constant balancing act between yeah. what, what we think the public what really wants. Um, and then, you know, everybody has their own preferences, and sometimes sure. that comes into it as well. <laughs> so in terms of the, the selection criteria, these are the things that we're looking for. We're looking for something that uh, has readability. and. Um, uh, like I was talking about having a lot of English majors on the <laughs> on the selection committee, sometimes they're looking at formats or writing styles that are really unique and different, and sometimes that doesn't translate really well to just your average casual reader. Mm -hmm. um, a couple years ago, we had a book, um, and I think I'm I have a master's degree. I think I'm fairly well read, but I was looking up quite a few words, uh, which I enjoy yeah. doing. I always think that's interesting when I find a new word that I have, but you know, if you get a book, if you give not a book, not everyone's going to find that in, in, enjoyable and, or entertaining. And, you know, you're reading one paragraph and you're looking up six or seven words or you're skipping over them trying to get, you know, an idea of the definition from people, a context yeah. clue. You know, people are going to put that book down. We had a, a discussion one time about, you know, people will really give a book about 40 to 50 pages. And mm -hmm. if they're not engaged in it, they'll put it down. And sometimes people yeah. will go back to it, especially if they have... Um, friends that recommend it or say you keep going, you know, that type of thing, but stick with it, you'll um, get there, yeah. You know, it has to be something that is accessible to to a large number of people. Mm -hmm. I mean, it has to be something that's discussable, 
Yeah. Um, and and this was kind of interesting because we had a book on our um, on our top. It made the top. We have a top eleven list this year, but it was called Stranger in the Woods, and it was a nonfiction book. And we had a, a discussion about a forty minute discussion whether that book had any discussion points. <laughs> you know, <laughs> so uh, um, it, it you know it didn't make it to the top, but it was. Um, I, I just thought that was really interesting. It was all about yeah. a, a guy who chose to live um, like a hermit, but he couldn't. Mm -hmm. um, one thing he couldn't do is he couldn't uh, get enough food. Mm. So he started robbing, it was a ro remote area in, um, mainly start robbing these camp cabins and mm -hmm. uh, campsites and everything for food. And he had a really interesting kind of moral view of, well, I didn't take the newest Game Boy. I took the old one, so that was okay. <laughs> and so we had this, you know, really interesting discussion about Rational, whether... A lot of rationalization <laughs> going on there. Yeah. Um, it has to be something that has community-wide interest. We don't want anything that's really narrowly focused that only a few people are going to find interesting or appreciate. Um, we've had, I would say this, we get some... I would say academic level type books nominated, mm -hmm. you know, where you kind of sit there and wonder, well, you know, if you're interested in this topic, this is a really good book, but is it really broad enough for um, the entire community? Yeah. And then uh, we want something that's multi-layered. So I would say last year we had a really good example in The Gentleman in Moscow. So this was a, a book that was set in a Moscow hotel. Um, it, it spans a range of like the beginning of the Soviet era through like the 1930s. So you have like Soviet history in there. You've got, there was a lot on Russian literature, Russian art, Russian music. Um, it was set in a hotel. So there was a lot about food and fine dining and good manners. And it's um, really a lot of really interesting characters. So you had all those relationships and friendship and how, um, how that, you know, added to the storyline. So that's something mm -hmm. that we kind of really look for is that if it's, if it's got a lot to it in mm -hmm. terms of, um, and finally we just say, is this a book you'd want to recommend to a friend? Mm -hmm. You know, this is something that, you know, you really think is um, interesting and um, you learned something from it and it was thought provoking and you'd want to recommend it. So that's kind of what our basic title um, selection criteria is. And then just a few other considerations. We really do try to avoid books from a series. Um, not so much if it's the first book, um, but if it's a third or fourth book in a series, the characters have already been established. Yeah, it's um, hard. You want to jump, jump into the middle. It's, it, um, we try to avoid books from that are kind of written just for a strict genre, either like mysteries or science mm -hmm. fiction, because you have people who mm -hmm. truly love those mm -hmm. um, genres, but um, if, it, if it doesn't, appeal to a lot of other people, you know, then we're going to lose a lot of readers along the way. So we have had books that have a mystery element in it or a science fiction element, but it just can't be, you know, so neatly and tight, tightly um, pegged as a certain genre. Mm -hmm. um, we want to try to avoid books that have um, strong political or religious focus. Um, we had, uh, except that way they can't have elements of it in there. So a couple years ago, we had a book where um, the main character, well, it centered on this, this character who was a woman who had a really strong Christian faith and that led her to working in a homeless shelter. And so she met this gentleman who was homeless and then it, um, she ends up getting cancer and these, the, her husband and this other gentleman become really good friends. Mm -hmm. And that was really where the storyline was going. So there were elements of, of religion you know, religious belief in it because it, it was about her um, her convictions and it was a nonfiction book, um, mm -hmm. but it wasn't so overwhelming that if you didn't share that religion, you wouldn't appreciate yeah. the book. Um, the same year we had a book that started out with um, every chapter started out with a Bible verse, uh -huh. and so that you know that we weren't going to go mm -hmm. there. Um, it's usually kind of interesting because we usually always get the Bible no nominated, and, and that's <laughs> you know we're just we're you know we're a public library, <laughs> not gonna happen, so yeah. we're we're for the entire community, and we have to kind of avoid mm -hmm. um, those types of books. Um, we do look at um, winners. Uh, of or um, in the past, in mm. terms of um, you know, if, if an author has been um, selected either for um, the actual one book one Lincoln selection or a top three selection, um, you know that might be a discriminating factor. If we've mm. got two books that we're kind of weighing and one author we've kind of already kind of um, supported, we might choose um, another Give author. Give another one a chance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
So for this year, we have three finalists, and um, there are Little Fires Everywhere by Celeste Ng, uh, Killers of the Flower Moon by David Gran, and Bear Town by Frederick Backman. And so these were announced to the public on Memorial Day. We have this uh, event at the mill, the coffee uh, shop, the mill, and the Haymarket, mm -hmm. um, and it's a kind of a fundraiser for our friends, for the uh, uh, the friends of the Lincoln City Library Foundation. So um, it's a lot of fun to go there. We we actually bring books there. Uh, we have computers there, so we check out to um, once they're announced. We have you know the scrambled yet. <laughs> we ask that people only <laughs> check out one one of the one of the books, and they're usually all gone by the time we're we're done. So well, we have so you can just check out on the fly, like like remote checkout kind of thing mm -hmm. with laptops. Yeah, we we yeah. Uh, we bring a. Uh, um, mobile like our computers that have mobile circulation software mm -hmm. on it and um, yeah it's usually it's really a fun event we get about 120 five ish people about a year um, it's kind of really kind of become a something that people um, do on Memorial Day mm -hmm. in the morning so so for little fires everywhere um, this book is set in uh, Shaker Heights uh, Ohio, so that was a planned community, and we've got two families here. One is, I would say, your quintessential upper middle class family with a mother, father, four children, um, and then we have the, this other family with just a single mother and a and a daughter. And um, the the single mother kind of she's an artist, so she has kind of a different sensibility and mm -hmm. kind of lives uh, her life kind of on her own. Um, the the Children are all teens, and they meet each other, and it's kind of one of these situations where the, you know, the the, the children of one family want to end up <laughs> with the opposite, uh, you know, parent. They're interested in and in, in the choices. And, the grass is always greener. Um, exactly. So you maybe got, got this um, kind of con conflict of values, and the the story starts out with uh, one of these houses on fire and this planned community and um, the firemen said there were little fires everywhere and there was definitely an accelerant to use so you're kind of working backwards to what happened to to lead up to this huge fire um, so it's I would say it's a character driven story um, it, it really kind of focuses on motherhood and um, you know do you play by the rules do you, you know do you do everything correctly or do you kind of follow your own path and do things the way you want to do it and is there some sense you're talking earlier about because of this fires and what's happening that it working backwards mystery element to figuring out what happened? Well, you pretty much know. Maybe? They oh, kind of okay. tell you who set the fire. Uh, okay. It's kind of what right, led so up to not, that. Yeah. You know, what what, okay. what what were the family dynamics that led up to somebody being so angry that, that they, they would do that? They would, right. they would okay. burn down their <laughs> their home. <laughs> Uh, then we have Killers of the Flower Moon by David Gran, and um, so this uh, is a nonfiction, and it um, talks about the Osage Reign of Terror, which was the uh, early part of the 20th century, 1920-ish to 30-ish, and the Osage Nation kept getting pushed off their land, um, and they end up in this area of Oklahoma that um, nobody thought was valuable at all, and one of the the things that when the final contract with the government was was signed was that the Osage um, tribe owned the any um, mineral rights. Mm -hmm. um, so about 10 or so years after they signed this contract, um, oil was discovered. All of a sudden, it's um, kind of the Osage people become one of the most wealthiest per capita people in, you, you know, in the world mm -hmm. um, because of all these um, all the, the mineral rights from oil, and uh, there's a bit of racism in there, and that the U.S. government passes a law that said if you are more than 50% um, Native American, that you need a guardian to take care of your um, affairs, and so it, it allows for um, a lot of grifters to kind of come in here and take advantage of um, the, the Osage uh, people, and what you find is all of a sudden there's a lot of people that are dying on natural premature deaths. Mm -hmm. And so there's people that are being shot, people that are being poisoned, there's an explosion, um, there's all these things going on and the local authorities can't solve it because in many cases they're a part of it. Mm -hmm. um, and so they bring in um, 
the FBI, and this is the very beginning of J. Edgar Hoover's tenure as uh, mm -hmm. director of the FBI. So it talks a little bit about that too. Um, if you like mysteries, this reads to me like a mystery. I love yeah. this book. I'm a nonfiction reader, so I just thought this book was really fascinating. It was a part of American history that I really didn't know anything about. Yeah, it's very close to us, you know, geographically, um, mm -hmm. and. Uh, uh, it, it's also very troubling when you realize how close the murderers are to the people who are being mm. murdered. And then our final one is Bear Town by Frederick Backman. So he's a pretty popular author. He wrote um, A Man Called Uwe, and um, that was a, a bestseller a couple of years ago. So this is a, a, a book um, that's about a, a town. It's a, a this small town where um, the whole identity of the town and the economic um, welfare of the town is kind of caught up in this junior league hockey team. This is a small town in Sweden, and so um, this this team has had an unexpectedly good year, and they're getting closer and closer to a championship, um, and and the semifinal game, after they, they win this really thrilling semifinal game, there is a, an incident between one of the star players and the daughter of uh, the general manager. And it, it basically kind of splits the whole town. Mm -hmm. And you kind of either end up believing one person or the other. Um, and this is right before the championship. So now all of a sudden the championship is, is kind of... Um, in the balance and and what the town is going to be like afterwards, you know, certain people decide, you know, they're going to pull their money out. It's it's a book that involves a little bit of racism, a little bit of classism, um, but you know, it also kind of talks about what we allow our our heroes to get away with, mm -hmm. and um, so um, that's a really interesting book. And he's written a follow up to it. I think it's oh, really? something along the lines of Us versus Them. I think it just I I saw. Hmm. Uh, um, a CD of it in our um, in our library a couple days ago, so I know mm. it's it's come out. But so it's actually a sequel. Uh, the, 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 oh. This one is the 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 first one. Right. No, but the new been, one is. But the so new one is is kind oh. of a sequel to, cause, okay. because the 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 book kind of ends with this town just in turmoil, mm. um, and all these people that it's a very small town, so everybody knows each other. Sure. Um, and Which so, is something we could lots of people here in Nebraska could definitely relate to. <laughs> well, and I think people on the committee thought you know you could because really. Hockey here is a metaphor for sports in general, mm -hmm. and then you could yeah. kind of even put it, you know, sports is, is a metaphor for basically anything that brings celebrity to people. You know, what, what do we allow people that, that are, um, you know, capture our imagination and, and we hope for? What do we allow them to get away with um, in life? So those are our, our three selections. Um, you can vote for the winner. Um, and there's multiple ways of voting for the winners, but um, we take votes all the way through July 31st, and then mm -hmm. we um, will actually announce the winner on Labor Day. So you can vote online. We have forms on our website. Um, you can vote in person, so all of our libraries have ballots mm -hmm. that you can vote for. Um, you can like things on Facebook, um, and that's another way to vote as well. Um, yeah, like to, I saw that, that you've got that mm -hmm. now that there's um, mm -hmm. certain ones that you can like, and then mm -hmm. also the Twitter mm -hmm. hashtag. Right. Each title has been given its own hashtag on Twitter. So and we count that as a vote too. So there's there's lots mm -hmm. of lots of ways to vote. You can vote early and vote often. Um, <laughs> well, that's the thing. You can vote more than once for your title. Right. right? I, it's I, not like one t one vote per person. And, um, yeah. Go to all these different places <laughs> and. And I, you know, last year it was to me when I looked at the the top three, I, I kind of thought, okay, one one was definitely a winner. Um, this year, I really think each book has its own set of readers. Um, They're very all each very different, um, yeah. And so I'm really interested to see which one is is going to pull away and be the winner because I I honestly don't don't know. <laughs> I don't even have a feel at this point. Um, like I said, I'm a nonfiction reader, so I really liked the the nonfiction title. But mm -hmm. I, the majority of our readers are fiction readers, so mm -hmm. um, you know, we'll just have to see. So one of the things we offer are book discussions. Um, so we have book discussions set up um, at three of our branch libraries uh, for each of the titles. So anybody who's not a part of a book club, if you want to come, and um, well, if you're a part of a book club, you can come too. But a lot of times the book clubs will read them and mm -hmm. discuss them themselves. But these are um, public events where people can come and um, discuss them. So they're all in July. They're right before our voting ends. 
And then our programming committee, um, we have um, pretty much, it's all pretty much staff members um, who kind of look at the program, or look at the books that have been selected, look at their themes, and try to come up with ideas for uh, programs that would be thematically related to the books. Mm -hmm. So um, we have the book discussion opportunities, and then in the early fall, we start um, doing our programs. Now last year, we did a program for each book, and then a program for the winner. Um, this year, what I'm trying to set up is uh, programs for each book, and then we probably won't do a final one just because we're kind of tied into the um, Great American Read, which is kind of right, right at that same, it is the same time. Same time. Yeah, so, um, October, yeah. so anybody who doesn't know, the Great American Read is being sponsored by the American Library Association and um, NPR and uh, or PBS. I'm sorry, PBS, and they're um, going to start. I think September 11th is when the first um, they did a pre-broadcast at the end of May yeah. and kind of introduced a hundred books that are loved by Americans and then um, they're going to start doing the actual, I think there's six episodes that start in September and so that's kind of... It's also a voting thing. Yeah, yeah, kind of read and vote and it kind of kind of conflicts with our timeline so we might just do the three programs and not do a mm -hmm. program for the winter this year simply because of that. But. So we do offer private um, discussion uh, group opportunities where a staff member will come out and, and speak to uh, or lead a discussion with a book group. And I do a lot of those, and those are a lot of fun. I will say you get um, you get into people's homes usually, um, and uh, you know people are just you know a lot of these book groups have been together for a really long time, so it's mm -hmm. really it's really interesting. And um, with gentlemen in Moscow last year, I I, I talked about that book for a year and. Um, I had actually three, th three book discussion groups in May, right? You know, so it really was a year-round program. <laughs> and in the last one I went to, one of the women said to me, "Did you notice that everything happened on the 21st of June? Uh, you know, all these major events." And I was like, "No, I read this book uh, and I've been talking about it for, <laughs> you know." And so it's that's what I was thinking. You go to so it, many that people come up with different things it, that you've never thought of. It, it, yeah. it, you know, it's really interesting. That's one of the things I enjoy so much because even if I kind of feel like I, you know, I know this you've been topic, living this book for a year um, and still things you don't. Yeah. yeah, everybody comes up with their own their own things. So, so the you have the final book that's just, just that's um, chosen, mm -hmm. and then after that, you still do sessions for all three, anyways. Or after they're well, chosen, you um, just narrowed, you just start doing the one particular. Title. Well, in the past, when we had chosen a winner, we did programming for the winner, and mm -hmm. that was what was causing so many problems with with getting the program set up and it was flowing into the following year and they really didn't want to do that. So mm. um, that's why they went to just having the selection committee pick the winner. So mm. when I kind of said to the steering committee, people are really upset about not being able to vote. One of the things we decided was that we would do a program for each book and then a final program for the winner. Ah, okay. um, so that's, that's kind of where we are. I think this year is going to be just a little bit different because of because, the great American yeah. read. Um, yeah, I mean, some people have said to me, well, you know, it's not really a one book if we're doing three, you know, yeah. three books. But um, for us right now, the way the program is run and given the time constraints, I have to have all the programs done by November, early November. Mm -hmm. um, it, it really becomes kind of a summer reading program. Mm -hmm. um, sure. And so that's, that's kind of what I mean, we you out. do programs for all of them, but individuals and book groups and whatnot can focus on just who was the winner themselves. Mm -hmm. no right. Problem. And like I said, with the yeah. gentleman in Moscow, you know, we announced that on Labor Day last year. Well, I was still doing book club discussions mm -hmm. all the way through May. Um, so um, it. <laughs> It, it's it's kind of what works with our time frame right now, mm -hmm. and that's kind of I know we've had I've had people ask me, well, can we have author discussions? And it's really hard to get an author in in that time frame. Usually, you have to book an author about a year out. It's hard, just, short notice. Yeah, we just I'm don't have that kind of time. Making line. the choice, yeah. And we don't really have the budget. I mean, when it was first started, that we had several different sponsors that you know contributed to a budget. Um, mm -hmm. So we just don't have the budget for big programs as well. So we're usually looking to try to get somebody, you know, somebody local, mm -hmm. um, and usually that's that, not too hard of a problem. <laughs>
So you can visit us online. Um, so we have a, a, a One Book, One Lincoln uh, website. And once we select the winner, uh, we offer a lot of additional information about uh, topics. That topic, usually there's a lot of information about the author themselves, about maybe the book, anything mm -hmm. that's thematically related to the book. Um, we have um, a lot of uh, author um, interviews. There's links to author interviews. So that's kind of um, something that we add once we choose a winner. Um, there's also a Facebook group, um, and that will mm -hmm. push out more information. Um, and then we have our Twitter account as well. And so if you have any uh, questions about how we, how we do our program, um, you can uh, mm -hmm. either call me or email me. Email is usually best. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but um, that's, that's basically yeah. the program in general. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, great. Um, anybody have any questions? Um, go ahead and type into the questions section of your GoToWebinar interface, and we can answer any questions you might have about the program, the books, the history of it, anything you want to know. I'll type that in. Um, but this was great. Uh, we had had, um, had done here on Encompass Live years ago, we were talking mm -hmm. about this, a session about one link and one, one book, one link, and we hadn't done it in a long time, so I'm glad. Because mm -hmm. said 17 years, that's pretty amazing mm -hmm. that still, but People want to still do it, still going strong, of course. <laughs> right, yeah. And, you know, there's been some discussion back and forth at the library, you know, is this a program that, you know, is still valuable? And I, and I think it, it is. You if know. you're getting 200, 150, 200 suggestions, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> pretty, yeah. <laughs> that seems to be something that, yeah, people are interested Interested, interested, definitely, yeah. And it's fun to get the comments back. Um, a couple of years ago, I, I, you know, as soon as they were published, I got a a, a comment from from one lady in the community who who told me I, you know, we had picked terrible books, and so I, <laughs> I turned around and asked her, well, do you want to be on our selection committee? And it was like, oh no, no, I don't. Want to be no, I just want to complain about it. Uh, um, but then I've heard a lot. I've heard um, several good things. Uh, one year we had two nonfictions and one fiction, and I heard heard that too. It was too much nonfiction. Um, you know, it, it's, it's you know you're never going to please everybody, I mean, but it's it's um, just one program, one event. Feel free to not join in this year. <laughs> we'll do better. Well, maybe you'll have something you like next time. Um, yeah. uh, we, I, I have heard quite a few people tell me that they liked um, the books this year, and uh, one of the things I look, we have a display, and I look and always see, you know, do we have books on the shelf? And right now, we, we don't have any on our shelves right now. So that's a usually they're a good, all out being good people, indication yeah. that, um, and, and then after after the top three, you know, if our, if our dis display is empty, then we start looking at the um, top Usually it's a top ten list. This year we had a, a top eleven, yeah. um, and and those were out too. So, <laughs> so that's and good. That, that's a good what? problem for us to have. It is. That's the that's the whole point. People are reading. People mm -hmm. are reading all these books, and they're going to be talking about them. Uh, we just have a comment that says, "Thanks, Katie. My book group started with the very first one. It's nice to see the timeline of titles we've read. Yeah, that yeah. you had those little on the bottom. Mm -hmm. We didn't mention it, but on the bottom mm -hmm. of each screen, as you saw, was each one had mm -hmm. you know here's the, the different mm -hmm. uh, winners for each year throughout the program, which are all on the website, I did notice too, yes, mm -hmm. so if you did want to, you can always go back and see all the way to the beginning what was mm -hmm. read, um, and I assume you still have copies of those in the library. Yes. Not as many as the year when you needed to have like... Well, usually, yeah, that's what I tell people too, if it was a po popular book uh, or a book that we selected, you know, in... Um, October is our friend's uh, book sale, so a year after um, the title has been one of our top three, we usually have a lot of books available on the, mm -hmm. in the book sale from the front. Because everybody's because, done. You know, yeah. we have that huge initial push of uh, demand, um, and then usually by fall, beginning of winter, the demand is really kind of tapered mm -hmm. off, and so that's when we start um, pulling the extra copies. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Well, it doesn't look like there's any questions from people this morning, and that's fine. Um, as Katie said, give her an email. Let her know if you want to um, know more about the program, how to get involved, or if you, as you said, want to have her come to do, or anyone from the yeah. staff, and it's always you, come and talk to your book group or do a discussion mm -hmm. at your library if you need someone to help lead something. Um, I know sometimes when that is one of the struggles I think some book groups have sometimes is we have this great book we want to read, but no one here really knows how to lead the discussion on it. Where you know, some you know, every now and then there's one that they're all a little, yeah, I don't know. But yeah. you guys have you know been, I don't know, studying up on these particular ones at least. So and if you you know if you have some good 
discussion questions and usually what I do is I there's usually lots of discussion questions available I, yeah. I I pull a lot of them and I go through and I look and see which ones I like so I usually use discussion mm. questions from a lot of different resources oh, yeah. um, sometimes I come up with them on my own but you don't need to reinvent the wheel there's a lot of no, there's resources, so many resources out there, out there for now, you yeah. um, and it, you know it's it's funny you just have to let discussions get you know go a certain way and some mm. some you'll throw the same question out and it'll, it'll go a completely different <laughs> way based upon people's experience yeah a different group of people in the room you're <laughs> gonna have different responses to the same question yeah mm. and that must be very interesting for you guys as if you are going to different book groups seeing as you said you mm. know one person discovers something seeing mm. you know if me as a person I'm in a book group I know I have my discussion with my people but it's I think it maybe is more interesting can be very interesting to jump from one Group to another one and hear what different people have to say well and we have I've had uh, some people that are in like multiple book groups so mm -hmm. um, and that's that's interesting too because a lot of times like I said it just really depends upon who's in the group who's willing to, to speak because sometimes mm -hmm. people are um, you know maybe not feel as comfortable um, or sometimes you get people that are just kind of um, you know dominate discussions but um, who, who's willing to say you know their feelings and um, Everybody has different backgrounds and different yeah. experiences, and they bring their their backgrounds to the story and and how they interact and connect with the characters and mm -hmm. and the events in the in the novels. So. Awesome. All right, all right. I think that will wrap it up. Yeah, contact Katie for more info and start reading those books, Lincoln. <laughs> all right, thank you very much. All right, thanks uh, for having thank me. Thank you everyone for being here this morning. I'm going to pop to move over to our. Website, you can hit escape on the keyboard there okay. for me. I can bring it up. There we go. All right. Um, so that will wrap it up for today's show. And um, it's going to be on our website. This is the Library Commission's website where you can search for Encompass Live or you can use the search engine of your choice and Encompass Live. So far, it's the only thing called that on the internet, as far as we can tell. So um, <laughs> you can find our website that way as well. Uh, today's show is being recorded, and it will be posted here on our website. First, we have here our upcoming shows, but right underneath them is a link to our archives. And these are the most recent ones for at the top of the list. So um, later this afternoon, today's show we posted here. We'll have a link to the slides and a link to the archive. Um, we post our videos on to the and it'll be just like this one from last week a link to the presentation link to the, the videos which will be on our youtube account um i will email everyone who attended today and everyone who registered for today's show and then post it out to our various communication uh, methods to let you know when the archive and the recording is available um, i'll also show you here while we're here and the archives we do have a search feature for our archives this is the uh speaking of being around for a long time <laughs> this is the 10th year of encompass live so we have a huge list of archives here if you go through i'm not going to scroll through the whole thing i'm um, going back all the way to january 2009 our first show so we do have a search feature you can search the entire um roster of all of our archives or just most recent year if you just want something really up to date. So you can search here by uh, name, presenter, topic, title, um, any kind of any terms, any words that might be anywhere in there and find any rest of sh um, archive shows. Uh, do be aware though of course this is an archive and as I said 10 years worth so there will be things here that are old or outdated information. Uh, links may be broken. We don't have don't go back and necessarily double check everything. Some of these services or programs might not exist anymore or have morphed into something new um, but uh, these are our archives we are librarians and that's what we do <laughs> is archive <laughs> things so everything as you can see here does have its session date listed so you will know what day date and year is from so if it's something old just keep that in mind when you're watching any of our archives um, so uh, that'll wrap it up for today's show. I hope you'll join us next week when our topic is Rising to the Challenge Using the Aspen Institute Report and Action Guide for Strategic Planning. Um, Anna Yount is a director, library director of the Transylvania County Library in Brevard, North Carolina, will be online remotely from us. We also don't have a budget to bring people here. <laughs> <laughs> so she's not coming here from North Carolina. Uh, she's coming in remotely to join us to talk about um, this uh, report that was done, uh, re envisioning. Rising to the Challenge, Re-Envisioning Public Libraries. Um, it's a report done by the Aspen Institute along with an actual action guide which is really useful. It's got some good things you can actually use for your, um, at your library. Uh, so 
definitely log in, uh, sign up for that show next week and any of our other upcoming shows that we have. Um, I want to give you a heads up there right now too, to let you know, um, every now and then depending, you know, Encompass Live is, broad, is broadcast live on Wednesdays. However, every now and then 4th of July appear, uh, uh, happens on a Wednesday, falls on a Wednesday. That day we are actually closed as a state agency. So this year's Encompass Live for that week is on a Tuesday. So just keep that in mind when it, for next month. Um, and I've got a nice bright red notice here, so you can see that it will be. It will not be on Wednesday. It will be on Tuesday, July 3rd for that week. So if you're planning ahead for that one, just keep that in mind. We won't be here on the 4th. We'll be here on the 3rd. Uh, then that, yeah, you can sign up for any of our upcoming shows that we have here. We've got things booked all the way through August. We've got a few more in August. I'm just going to finalize and get them up on the calendar soon. Um, and Compass Live is also on Facebook, so if you are a big Facebook user, give us a like over there. We post reminders. See, so here's a reminder to log in for today's show. Um, no, I don't want to set up sign in right now. Um, reminders when it, let people know when our recordings are available. These are just reminders about upcoming show there we go it's last week's show so um if you are big on facebook and you keep up with things there give us a like and you'll get notified of what we're doing over there so that wraps it up for today thank you very much katie for coming over thanks for thank you everyone me. for being here and we'll see you next time on encompass live bye-bye <coughs> excuse me